Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gaming here. As most of you know, I recently acquired a new GTX 1080 to go SLI. And um, Nvidia has been making quite a bit of noise about their new high bandwidth bridge and how it's supposed to help reduce frame latency and even possibly increase performance at a higher resolution of 4K and above when you're using SLI. So as you can see right now I'm using two flexi bridges that came with my motherboard but out of curiosity and because it didn't cost me too much money I went and got myself an EVGA high bandwidth bridge so what I'm going to do is check this thing out and see if there is any noticeable difference in the experience or performance so here's a look at the bridge installed on the NVIDIA GTX 1080 Founders Edition and G1 Gaming. The reason I got the G1 Gaming, one, because it was cooler, two, because it was basically the same dimensions as the Founders Edition, which means the high bandwidth bridge was a an option for me if I did go for it. And as you can see, it fits perfectly well. It does light up, but I've opted to keep it off because I don't have any of my lights on. The only light you can see on at the moment is the fan stop light which comes on when the G1 Gaming's fans are not spinning because they're um, at a very low temperature at this time so that's pretty much it so what I'm going to do is do a bit of testing and if there's any difference I'll let you guys know about it so just in case any of you guys are wondering which one I actually bought and how much it cost this is the EVGA um, Pro High Bandwidth SLI Bridge this is the two slot gap um, version because um, that's what I needed to fit my motherboard layout I got mine for twenty four ninety five, so basically twenty five great British pounds, which is considerably cheaper than what Nvidia are charging. They want around forty pounds. If you can see, they want thirty eight ninety nine, which is um, absolutely ridiculous just for an SLI bridge. So basically, the whole point of this bridge is to double the bandwidth over previous generation um, bridges. So in an effort to reduce latency and boost frame times um, for four K and one hundred and twenty hertz gaming. So let's see how it does as you can see pro hb bridge for gtx 1080 and 1070 gpu so that's a look at it if any of you guys were interested <laughs> What's our plan? Our plan? You're not an apprentice anymore, boy. So study your surroundings. Devise your own plan. I'm not here to hold your hand.
No targets are reachable. Out of the way. Move. Where the hell was Duchesneau? Oh. If you can't find a weakness to exploit, make one. You secured the cathedral? Oui, monsieur. Good. Tell Sivert I'll meet him inside. Opportunities everywhere. It's on you to take it. You! Get back here with my keys! Thieves! And if all other plans fail, why not sacrifice yourself for the cause, your life for his, before Altair? That was the Levantine approach. You mean a dagger in broad daylight as I'm cut down where I stand? Sends a powerful message. I'll do it my way. Whatever you think best. Assassin. So to conclude, really, the two flexi bridges pretty much performed on par with the high bandwidth bridge. Now I have seen that the high bandwidth bridge does provide um, a boost in performance in some specific games, but realistically, it's really just meant to lower the latency and increase um, frame time performance um, in SLI. So hopefully, um, over the course of um, my experience, that will be the case. But if you're someone with two flexi bridges, then Buying a high bandwidth bridge from what I've seen so far definitely isn't essential. Um, so anyway guys, that's pretty much uh, my quick test on the high bandwidth bridge, not um, anything essential. It does look good aesthetically though, so if you're one for looks then it might be something worth purchasing as well. So Anyway guys, um, this is pretty much my last video for the year, so happy new year for all of those who have been following me. And um, I'll see you guys in the next year. Thanks very much for watching.